Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Saryaluzel. Thanks for clicking. You know, it's funny to think that all this sprouted from how bad a game was. Garden of Banban was the pinnacle of lazy, boring, and soulless game design, but someone decided to step up to the plate and improve its qualities, which gave us the release of Garden of Banban Reincarnated by Unique Geese, a remake that was superior to its original in every single aspect that it was made in a week. This creator grew immense popularity from this achievement, and as expected, people wanted him to remake Chapter 2 since it came out at the time and it was somewhat worse than the first one. But Unique Geese, however, decided to put all his eggs into one basket, no pun intended, and create an original mascot horror title. I was invested on the spot he announced this during one of his discussion videos. His sole purpose was to use the skills he learned prior to make something original, rather than an improvement of something else that already existed. I was excited about this because knowing that a mascot horror game that was being developed by someone that actually knows what he's doing brought me a feeling of relief knowing that maybe the mascot horror genre can finally give us some good original content for once. Forget all these wastes of RAM and money, I want something with tons more passion and effort into it. Two things that always matter the most and are remembered the most in a project. In this video, I'm going to be talking about this release. If you enjoy the video, please subscribe and like the video so that it can be reached out to more people. You alone can indeed make a difference. So with that out of the way, let's discuss this new title, known as Indigo Park. The game starts with an old VHS reveal for Indigo Park. He said the title of the game, guys, we can end it here, thanks for watching. Being played on some gaming setup along with a bird up soda can. Enough said. Someone known as Ed discusses to Laura that he will be going to investigate. I'm assuming the character we're playing as is a guy because why would you name your daughter Ed? Once we arrive at the park, we find it as a shell of its former self, a run-down and destroyed establishment with no signs of any life. This is already interesting to me because my favorite take on a mascot horror title is a setting that is a crumbled mess. Cut wires, rocks, and broken tiles everywhere. Rusty old animatronics that appear to be struggling so much just to stay functional. It creates a certain atmosphere that is my absolute favorite in a video game. Having an area of a once thriving location to be discovered deep below years later as a shamble of what it used to be, it's why I like areas such as the old ocean in Another Crab's Treasure, the city of Lust in Ultra Kill, and the entirety of FNAF Ruin. It all has a reoccurring theme of something's time being over, but aspects of it refuse to let go to the point where they become obstacles to wandering investigators from another time, which is usually us, the player. This world was never meant for us. You're only looking upon ghosts, shadows of the past. There's nothing to gain. You can't save anything or anyone from here. You must let sleeping dogs lie. As we enter the side of the gate, we meet the park's mascot, Rambly the Raccoon, an artificial intelligence that acts like he's alive with feelings, personality, and hopes and dreams. I mean, we just had an example of this, so I'm already calling a red flag on that one. Hi there, and welcome to Indigo Park! The world's most innovative and engaging family fun experience! Jump into the world of your favorite character! Wait! You're our first guest in 2,920 days, 4 hours, 23 minutes, and 38 seconds. Congratulations! I'm Rambly, Rambly the Raccoon, and it's my job to make sure your experience here at Indigo Park is the most fun it can be. Just hop on over to the registration center to your left, where our friendly assistant will help you begin your adventure in the park. He states that not a single guest has come to the park in almost 10 years, meaning something happened or time simply changed and the company went bankrupt. Whatever the reason is, or whatever it may be, the outcome is that you are the first guest in a decade, and this place needs a lot of work. We find gears, which is a reoccurring trope in this game, to turn on the generator to open the main gate. Okay, for real this time, welcome to Indigo Park! Once entered, we are then tasked to gain an item known as the Critter Cuff. This item is the usual mascot horror tool that you use to get into the other rooms of the game. It's a lot more effective than the teddy bear in Joyville, I can tell you that much. We enter Rambly Railroad to board the train, as Rambly takes us on a ride as we are introduced to the other mascots. The mascots are shown to us through a Disney-style cardboard cutout showing. First, there's Molly McCall. Oh look, it's Molly McCall! It's Molly McCall! Sure are, Maul. Why, you only crashed into six bars this week. I'm not crashing, Rambly. I'm barnstorming. 
What's barnstorming? It's crashing with style. It, it barely hurts at all. Say, those young adventurers you've got along with you look like great pilots. Why not try your hand at flying in my ride? Rooftop races. Admission included with your credit card. Molly McCaw is the pilot of the group, where she flies a plane and constantly crashes it. She shows up in many different variations within the park, having her as one of the most popular members. She is also our mother's favorite in case you missed that detail from the beginning cutscene. Next, there's Finley the Sea Serpent. My Rambly. Why the long face and body? You've known me for 100 years, Rambly. I'm always long because I'm always longing for a new seashell for my collection. Oh, Finley, you should come out of your shell. How about you come into it instead? My ride, Oceanic Odyssey, will teach you all about the wonders down under the deep blue sea. It's as blue as me. <sighs> I hope you'll visit. I'm so lonely. Oceanic Odyssey currently closed for repair. Finley is the star of the attraction, Oceanic Odyssey. He seems to be a very depressed looking character, seeming gloomy and down, like Donkey from Winnie the Pooh as an example. Also an interesting note is that, when our mother and us the protagonist used to go to this park, Finley always scared us because of his massive size when we were a child. Then last, there's Lloyd the Lion. <sighs> hey there, Lloyd. Do not shame me with that common folk name! I am the proud, the prestigious, the professional Lloydford L. Lion, actor extraordinaire! Great act, Lloyd. Lloyd is the showman of the group that puts on a daily performance for the audience. I like how he rolls his R's whenever he puts on his show face. I don't know, I just find that as a cute character trope. Lloyd is the only character in the group that Rambley actually dislikes. Even though Rambley considers the others as close friends, it seems that Lloyd was highly popular compared to the rest of the band, and Rambley wasn't a fan of that as he felt Lloyd was getting too much attention. Weirdly enough, Lloyd was also the only character to receive a rubber hose throwback plush, which is kinda bizarre, it's a little bit of a weird detail if you ask me. Ugh, I don't get why we even have those. And why do they only make one of Lloyd? Is it because he's the loudest? I can be loud too! Where's my limited edition throwback plush? Where's Molly's? Where's Finley's? Give this mistake to a child and they'll cry. Even weirder than the golden Rambly plush, which is just a Rambly plush with gold spray paint. Yeah, I'm not joking. Rambly literally tells you this. And mascots actively telling us the scummy practices of companies is hilarious to me personally. Wow, is that a limited edition gold Rambly plush? Parents were fighting tooth and nail for those things when they came out. Seriously, our employees had to clean up so many straight teeth and nails. Hard to believe there was all that demand for a regular Rambly plush we just blasted with gold spray paint. As the ride breaks down, we need to find more gears, but as we press on, we find this bizarre set piece, where a Molly Macaw animatronic can be found, as she says something rather... questionable. This was definitely a moment that stuck out to me, as this moment makes us question Rambly's behavior when he's not within the range of us. It definitely feels rather odd compared to the other hidden implications of the game. We are then taken to Lloyd's Theater as we need a key to enter Jetstream Junction. Why does that sound like a Sonic Adventure level? Once we are in the theater, we find a key within the storage room in the back of the theater. But we are not alone, as there is a Lloyd animatronic actively trying to hunt us. I'm not sure whether that is actually Lloyd or if it's just an animatronic lying as an assistant. Him having no clothes on kind of throws me off. Are you sure this is an animatronic or is this just a furry? As we leave, he attacks us again, but it seems that like he gets weakened through the critter cuff collar signal. We enter Jetstream Junction to move to our next task. We are suggested to enter the rooftop races for the ride, but it's broken. So we go to the landing pad instead, and there is an arcade cabinet called Rambly Rush. We play as Rambly, collecting berries as an extra character as Salem the Skunk, who wasn't mentioned before for some reason. He uses a potion to turn Molly into a rampageous beast of herself. We defeat her in one of the easiest bosses I've ever played in a video game. Then the machine shuts down. 
Now, some people might look at this and say that this is just a cute little arcade cabinet, but if you were to pay attention to the actual level itself, this game could easily be a good hint as to why the park shut down in the first place. Once we go deeper into the landing pad, we find ANOTHER BALL PIT ROOM! Look, okay guys, I get it, a ball pit room is kind of necessary for a kid's play setting, but having seen these already in FNAF multiple times, Joyville, and the agony of my existence at this playtown, I just get tired of seeing them. Can we just get something else? There are other options for an activity room, you know? There are other options! Forever, I'm just gonna take it with a grain of pepper and move on. We do a boring puzzle, yes it was boring, fight me, as Molly McCaw cuts us off as she chases us throughout the location, until we enter a security room where Rambly chops her head off by shutting the door. Okay, let's dial back a bit, as before this happens, Molly copies statements of other people. These phrases all came from years ago, and they go along the lines of, you've known me for a hundred years, get back in your cage, bird, and get up, you stupid freak. I want to play with the birdie. All this can easily imply that Molly was heavily abused during the glory age of the park. My theory could be that Rambly could be involved in all that, and might be mistreating Molly and lied to us when we are told that they are best friends. I, I don't know, it isn't clear how long this park existed, and he shows no reaction or even any mention of causing her death when he explains to us that he knows the park is in shambles, and asks us to work with him to restore the park. Welcome to the Rambly's Wranglers Registered Room! Here we have plenty of amenities, and... Uh, okay, okay. I can see in your facial tracking that you're scary, angry, upset. Transparency is an important part of our policy here at Indigo Park, so... I need to be honest about something. The park has been inactive for years. Employees stop showing up, guests too. The mascots are... I just was so excited to see a visitor, and I wanted to be sure you were given the best experience possible. But I was confined to the entrance for so long, I didn't realize just how much disrepair the park has fallen into. I'm wasting all of your fun time. Eh, sorry for the inconvenience. But, but, I have an idea. I have access to the repair documentation in my database. I just can't execute most tasks without authorization from a human user. You must have come here because the park matters to you too, right? Would you be willing to help me restore the park? I can see in your facial tracking data that you aren't opposed to this. Ooh, I'm so excited! Let's get this place back in business! Once we enter to Crossway again, we enter Oceanic Odyssey, as Rambly warns us to stay away from the glass as Finley appears before the chapter ends, with a cute song that basically sums up to leave a review and to follow for more updates. Overall, this game was okay. I like it. But it does have quite a few issues. I think I just expected too much when an actually talented creator was making this. I thought he would have thought outside the box a lot more, and just he just basically did what a bunch of other mascot horror games did. There's a lot of formulas within this game that have already been done before. But there is some unique aspects at play here. It's not that often that a theme park is used, and having Rambly as a sort of improved version of Helpy from FNAF Ruin was a good choice for the mascot, and definitely makes itself stand out compared to the other titles. I do recommend this game for anyone who is looking for a mascot horror game with actual passion and effort. But anyways, thank you so much for watching, for everybody who's stayed here until then. I don't know why, why would you stay here? I already knew this video was going to be long after typing the script, but getting it done to share to all of you was a big payoff. I'll follow Indigo Park for updates, and I'll update you if this video does well. Please like the video, as I'm interested to see where the story takes us. I already have another video in mind that involves a certain creator we all love and hate at the same time. Take care now, love y'all.